Movies have always held a special place in our hearts. We've spent a lot of hours in seats very much like these, and we usually came out humming a tune because there are some great songs that came from all kinds of films. So we've decided to save you a seat. The theater's dark and the popcorn is hot, so let's go to the movies. It seems that all songs, when you turn them loose, have a tendency to bounce around. They don't always stay in their field or in any particular category. Way back between the Great Wars in 1931, Kenny and Coots wrote a song called Love Letters in the Sand. Now, because of its early history, I can tell you it was supposed to be strictly a pop song. Russ Colombo made it popular, and it was the theme song for the George Hall Orchestra. Now, years later, I remember hearing Mike Wiseman singing it, so I thought it was a country song. Pat Boone, being raised pretty much like the rest of us, just thought it was a good song. So when Hollywood called him to star in a movie called Bernadine, he sang it because it felt right. It wound up number one in the world and became one of the longest running chart hits ever. And here's the guy who made it universal to write love letters in the sand. Here's Pat Boone. you want a song with movie history, you've come to the right place. It was written in 1928 by George and Ira Gershwin, first sung on Broadway by a 19-year-old Ginger Rogers in Girl Crazy. Then it came to the big screen in 1932, and again in 1943 with Judy Garland and Mickey Rooney. Then, remade in 65, they changed the title of the movie to When the Boys Meet the Girls, but the song never changed. It was just getting started. It showed up in Rhapsody in Blue, starring Robert Alda, Humoresque, starring Joan Crawford, and then Milton Berle's Always Leave Them Laughing, Gene Kelly's An American in Paris, and the Jane Froman biography with a song in my heart. And if that's not enough, here's the best part. Here's Linda Davis singing one of the most filmed songs in history, Embraceable You.
Now, we've tried to point out in our movie music salutes that sometimes the soundtrack makes the movie even better. This was probably true with our film and song, Love is a Many Splendored Thing. At first, the movie was more popular. The song was turned down by Tony Martin, Doris Day, Eddie Fisher, and Nat King Cole. But after the Four Aces sold over a million records, the song has settled into the standard category. Whenever you start talking about the great 50s vocal groups, the Statlers light up. And tonight is no exception when they light up their arrangement of Love is a Many Splendored Thing.
Yeah. 